Hey everyone, today we're diving into a topic that might seem a bit behind the scenes, but it plays a massive role in how our homes and many buildings stand strong and secure. We're talking about roof trusses. Now, I know what you're thinking. What are roof trusses and why they matter? Stick around, because understanding what they are and how they work can give you a whole new appreciation for the bones of a building and maybe even help you make smarter choices in your next home project. Let's break it all down right here on History of Simple Things. Let's start with the basics. What exactly is a roof truss? In the simplest terms, a roof truss is a structural framework, usually made of wood or metal, designed to support the shape of a roof. Think of it as the skeleton that holds everything up. It distributes the weight of the roof down into the building's walls and foundation, and it does so in a way that's both strong and efficient. Now, this isn't just a random assembly of beams thrown together. Trusses are precision engineered. Each piece has a job, and the entire structure works as a system to bear loads, handle stress, and maintain stability over time. Okay, so why use roof trusses instead of just sticking with the old-school method of cutting rafters on site? Great question. Traditional roof framing, using individual rafters, has been around for centuries. And while it works, it's labor-intensive, requires more raw material, and demands a high level of craftsmanship on site. Roof trusses, on the other hand, are prefabricated in a factory setting. That means they're built under controlled conditions, then delivered to the job site ready to be installed. This approach cuts down on construction time, reduces material waste, and ensures consistency and accuracy. Plus, trusses can span longer distances without needing interior support walls, which opens up design possibilities inside the building. Let's take a quick look at the parts that make up a roof truss. Most trusses form a triangular shape, and that's no accident. Triangles are incredibly stable shapes when it comes to structural engineering. The triangle ensures that loads are transferred evenly and helps prevent deformation. The main parts of a truss include top cords. These form the top edges of the triangle and follow the slope of the roof. Bottom cord. This is the base of the triangle and acts like the ceiling joist, tying the structure together. Web members. These are the diagonal and vertical pieces inside the triangle that connect the top and bottom cords. They help distribute loads efficiently throughout the truss. All of these components are connected using metal gusset plates, which are those spiky-looking metal plates you might have seen pressed into the joints. They hold everything together securely without the need for bolts or heavy connectors. Not all roof trusses are created equal. In fact, there are quite a few different types, each designed for a specific kind of roof or structural need. Here are a few of the most common ones. King Post Truss. This is one of the simplest forms, with a central vertical post and two angled top cords. It's often used for small spans and simple structures like garages or sheds. Queen Post Truss, similar to the King Post, but with two vertical posts instead of one, this allows for a slightly longer span. Fink truss. Probably the most commonly used truss in residential buildings. It has a distinctive W shape inside the triangle, which provides excellent strength and load distribution. How truss. Used for both roofs and bridges, this design features vertical web members in tension and diagonal web members in compression. It's often found in larger buildings. Scissor truss. These are used when you want a vaulted ceiling. The bottom cord is angled upward, mimicking the slope of the roof and giving you more open space below. Attic truss. Perfect if you want to use your attic as living space. These trusses are designed with an open center area that can be finished into a room. Each of these has its own set of pros and cons, 
depending on what you're building and how much space or support you need. So, what are the main benefits of using trusses in your project? First off, speed. Since trusses are built off-site, your construction timeline speeds up dramatically once they arrive. A whole roof frame can often be installed in just a day or two. Next, cost efficiency. Less labor, less waste, and fewer on-site errors mean you save money overall, even if the upfront cost of prefabrication seems higher. Then there's consistency. Every truss is built using the same design and specifications, so you get uniform strength and structure across the entire roof. And finally, design flexibility. Trusses allow for longer spans, which means you can eliminate interior support walls and create open concept spaces more easily. That said, there are a few things you should keep in mind before deciding to go with roof trusses. One key thing is that once a truss is installed, it shouldn't be altered. Cutting into a truss to run wires, plumbing, or skylights can compromise its integrity and lead to serious structural problems. If you need special accommodations like skylights or HVAC systems, it's crucial to plan those into the truss design from the beginning. Another thing, transporting large trusses to the job site can be tricky, especially for very long spans. You'll need enough clearance and access, and sometimes even a crane to lift them into place. Also, while trusses reduce the need for interior support walls, they can limit usable attic space, unless you specifically opt for an attic truss or similar design. So, what are roof trusses? They're the unsung heroes of modern construction. Efficient, strong, and designed with precision to carry the weight of the world, or at least, your roof. Whether you're a homeowner planning a renovation, a contractor mapping out a build, or just a curious mind wanting to know how things work, understanding trusses gives you insight into the backbone of architecture. If you're considering a building project, don't overlook the value of good truss design. Consult with a structural engineer or truss manufacturer early in your planning, especially if you're aiming for a complex layout or have special needs like vaulted ceilings or extra attic space. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.